Collapse of uh, crypto exchange FTX causing increased scrutiny for the players that are still out there. One thing that got attention earlier this week was Binance seeing more than a billion dollars in outflows. But the company's CEO tweeted this was, quote, business as usual. And about 12 hours later, he said things seem to have stabilized. Also, as we told you at the top of the hour, a new filing tied to FTX's bankruptcy proceedings saying that just days before the company went bust, a top executive told Bohemian authorities that Sam Bankman Freed may have committed fraud by sending customer money to his Alameda Research hedge fund. Joining us right now to talk all about this is Binance's CEO, CZ. Um, CZ, thank you for joining us. Uh, so many issues about trust and credibility and integrity in this space. And I, I want to talk about FTX in a moment, but I want to, I want to start with what's happening at your own firm. Uh, given the outflows this week, I saw that you said on uh, an AMA, this is one of these Ask Me Anything, you said there's no amount of withdrawals that would put us under, under any pressure but that, uh, I think, is a, a very bold statement uh, to be making. How are people and why should people trust that their money is safe at this point? So I think the uh, thanks, Andrew, for having me. And um, the well-run crypto exchanges should hold user assets one-to-one. -one. So user deposit Bitcoin, we hold it in Bitcoin, we move to a cold wallet, we keep some in the hot wallet. And people, um, they sell it. Now the Bitcoin belongs to somebody else, but we still hold it in the cold, cold storage. People can draw, withdraw 100% of the assets they have on Binance. We will not have an issue at, in any given day. So 100% um, of the users withdraw 100% of the assets, we, we'll be fine. This is very different for traditional financial people to understand because banks run on fractional reserves. And the traditional regulators, m many of them may think that it's okay for crypto businesses to be running on fractional reserves. That is not okay. Um, in crypto, there's no central bank printing money to bail out banks when there's a liquidity crunch. So um, crypto businesses have to hold user assets one-to-one, -one, and that's what we do. It's very simple. Okay, but let me, let me ask you about that uh, specifically, and I, I don't want to get too technical, but uh, indulge me for a moment. When you had what seemed to be liquidity issues around customers wanting USDC, it, it, looks, it, it looked, at least from this vantage point, that what was happening here uh, could have been avoided if, and, and tell me if I'm wrong about this, you allowed customers to deposit and hold USDC instead of what it looked like was that you auto-converted them into your own exchange dollar. Am I wrong? Uh, that's a minor correction. Um, so number one is we do the auto-conversion into BUSD, which is not issued by us, uh, which is not the exchange dollar. Um, it's actually issued by a New York DYF uh, uh, licensed entity, um, Paxos. So um, the reserves are in New York. Uh, it's a stable coin. The problem we had before is we have many different types of stable coins on Binance. And you know, Bitcoin trades against USDC, Bitcoin trades against BUSD, and the USDT, um, there's TUSD, there's a bunch of other things. And then you, it's very difficult for users to find the best price. So we said, okay, they're all stable coins and they should convert one to one. So let's combine all of them into one, into one so that the users just go to, they wanna buy Bitcoin, they go to Bitcoin BUSD and they find it. On the deposit and withdrawal, we do the conversion. We have channels to convert them one-to-one, -one, but the channels we have actually have to go through a bank because to convert from BUSD to USDC, we have to sell BUSD into US dollars, a cash in a bank, move it to a different bank account, and then buy that by USDC at a different institution. That, uh, so that day, we had more users trying to buy uh, or trying to with deposit BUSD and withdrawing uh, USDC. And we ran out of that. And the bank that does the conversion doesn't open for until six hours later. And that's a bank in New York. So we were actually blocked. This actually issue was actually caused by a bank. So uh, uh, that's what, and stable coins is the only one we convert. Every other asset, we, uh, people deposit Bitcoin, we hold Bitcoin. People deposit Ethereum, we hold Ethereum. Right. And, and, that's and, you, and you understand why I'm asking that question, because it, it, it does appear in that instance, at least, that uh, when you said no amount of withdrawals would put you under pressure, uh, by default, it puts you under pressure, you know, whether it was your doing or some other bank's doing. And so the question is, longer term, would you reevaluate how, how you do that? So we have the assets to convert. Um, so it's, it, there's, no, there's no margin, no leverage. We just needed the bank to open. So the bank opened six hours later, we, it was fine. So banks don't work for like, you know, 24 hours a day. Banks only work for like a few hours a day. And, um, and when you try to and when the banks are shut down, when, you try to, when banks are closed, you try to withdraw money, it doesn't work. We, that's exactly the same situation that happened. 
And we allowed people to withdraw other stable coins onto other platforms to do conversion if they right. want. So there was not a liquidity issue. It was just there was a conversion issue that was going through the bank. In, in terms of uh, the credibility of Binance, uh, you disclosed that Binance holds about $60 billion of crypto assets. Uh, but thus far, uh, you haven't disclosed your liabilities. And, and I wonder why that is and whether you will. Yeah, so we are working with firms to do the uh, audit of financials, li liabilities, et cetera. Very simply, Binance does not owe people money. Binance does not have loans from other companies, from other funds. It just, it, we just don't have it. You can ask any fund in the, in, the, in the ecosystem. You can ask any VC. We actually do also do not have VC investments. So we don't owe anybody any money. And uh, we also do not have loans to other people um, that we depend on for our next payroll. So um, we are very simple, very self-contained type of organization. And uh, we manage our cash very simply. So FT that's very, very different from the FTX situation where so people who are hurt by FTX are now worried about everybody else. And, and they were defending FTX before. But that's why they have money on FTX. So but just because they're bitten by one snake doesn't mean that every other animal uh, is the same. So the CZ, you're in a business, obviously, it's not the same, as you pointed out, as, as maybe a bank, but it does, I mean, it relies on confidence to some extent, and the easiest way would be to publish a real audit by a respected audit firm. Why is that so yeah, hard to so, do? Why is that so hard? So uh, it actually doesn't, in our industry, we don't depend that much on trust. Uh, we, de we depend on very much on verification. So, you know, two days ago, people want to withdraw. We didn't have an issue. Um, and um, uh, the USDC thing was fixed in a couple of hours, you know, like in, within an hour when the bank opened. And um, so um, we, uh, everybody, every other asset works just fine. And we are working with auditing firms. Interestingly, many audit firms are kind of scared to work with crypto businesses. They don't want to, you surprised. know, there are a few audit firms that audited FTX and they got burned because they give the stamp of approval. And I don't know how they did the audits, but the audits don't reveal every problem. So, no, but, I, but an um, audit from a audit big four auditor kind of, would reveal that, CZ. If you could right. get a big four auditor to say that, if, if you're saying that some of them don't want to work with you, that raises questions too. They, they don't want to work with you because you don't have the files and the data that would make them feel comfortable signing off and and giving that stamp of approval? Uh, actually, many of them don't even know how to audit crypto exchanges. Um, they, don't, they, don't, they don't really, when they, so when they audit, they audit, they're very used to auditing a firm. Um, they don't know how to audit uh, uh, user assets, different blockchains, et cetera. So I think that capability may or may not be there. Um, but you know, many of the top leading uh, uh, right. uh, audit firms, they're much more comfortable in the traditional financial space. Right. No, no, when, CZ, when I, comes to I know audits, you come out and said that you, my understanding is that you came out publicly and said that Deloitte, Ernst & Young, uh, KPMG, and PricewaterhouseCoopers uh, wouldn't participate in these audits. My question to you is, have you, have you spoken with them since? Um, and is there, under, is there a circumstance under which they, they would do it? Is, it? is it about the disclosure that you're providing to them? Is it about their own experience? Uh, no, I have not personally spoken to them, and I also did not name them. Um, but, you know, uh, we are very ha happy for them to work with anyone that wants to audit uh, properly how to audit the crypto business. Mm. Um, yeah. But even but, the audit that you're not, I shouldn't call it an audit, even the disclosure that you're doing with Mazars is, is not, I mean, you're setting the rules for this. It's not a real audit. You're telling them what you'll share, and you're kind of setting up, uh, they wouldn't call it an audit. Uh, look. Um, the FTX gone through a gap audit, and that that firm got a lot of reputational hit right now. And because FT, FTX went down, so people are agey. People are, you know, very very agey about yeah. their reputations, etc. So, um, and we are now much more transparent than traditional financial businesses. Does Coinbase? No banks, CZ, hundred, Coinbase has a big four. four reserves. Coinbase has a big four auditor. Um, actually, I'm, I, I don't look at Coinbase. We don't really look at I think other. So, though. I, and, I, don't, and I don't know the details. So they, they, they understand it well Deloitte enough. Deloitte is the auditor right. yeah. for Coinbase. So they yeah. can so figure. They do have some are much experience. Less, much smaller. Coinbase much smaller jurisdiction coverage, uh, global coverage, number of coins, number of products. Um, just you know, it's still a bit different. Right. CZ, the other thing I wanted to ask you about, and this relates to F, uh, FTX. Um, yesterday, uh, Kevin O'Leary testified in, in, in front of uh, the Senate, and he was asked, where did the money go? 
uh, meaning the FTX money. And he suggested that one place that the money may have gone is, in fact, to you. Uh, when Sam Bankman Freed, back in 21, the summer of 21, effectively bought out your stake in the company. How concerned are you that that money uh, will be uh, clawed back? Uh, are you prepared uh, to uh, hand it back to creditors if, in fact, they were to ask? And was it paid to you in U.S. dollars in some other kind of currency? Well, first of all, I think um, Calvin um, O'Leary, um, he's making a bunch of nonsense claims, and they don't make sense. They don't make any logic. Um, he shouldn't be making those claims as a celebrity investor. I'm actually very surprised that he's able to omit a lot of different things and make some really uh, specific uh, targeted things. For example, in that interview with you guys, that in the same interview, he said the entire record uh, they are, from his account on FTX, the entire records are gone. He's not concerned about that. He just picks up the phone and calls the SBF. He's not concerned about the fact that the platform records for users are gone. He's not concerned about other users. He, how many people can pick up the phone and call SBF? And he He's, says he was talking with FB, SBF up until the point that he was uh, SBF was arrested. Yeah, that, see, 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 I that's see an your indicator point. of a very special relationship. Yeah, I see your point, and, and I, I don't think that I don't think the problems at, that existed at FTX were simply any back and so, forth between your two forms. It, it, it definitely yeah. led to the disclosure that there had been money that was taken, but that disclosure raises lots of questions about firms like yours. Have you yeah. done the same? Has there ever been commingled funds? Have you ever taken any of the clients' funds and done anything with them? And again, why yeah. should we believe you? Because Sam Bankman Fried told everybody, no, that hasn't happened. And he tweeted a lot of the same stuff that you've been tweeting in recent days, which I think gets yeah. back to this idea of show me the money. Yeah, so let's get back to show me the money part. So Calvin omitted the fact that there's no records. That's not a problem to him. So he just want to talk to Sam and believe whatever Sam says. He doesn't want to look at the records. And if you look, and he wants to omit all the small spendings, $50 million, $200 million. $200 million is a small spending. That's very convenient. He says he didn't know that Binance was a shareholder of FTX. So he invested in FTX without looking at the cap table. But he was very specific in the way he counts for a transaction two years ago. So that's kind of contradictory. So um, I think Calvin's a liar. So um, I think he's lying about, about a bunch of stuff. So that's okay, his problem. To us, we want to be transparent. We want to set the golden standard for reliability, solidness in this so space. Do so do it. And we're, so, we're taking so a number CC, of actions. Uh, let, but let's go but just back to, back to the, the, the specifics here. In 21, Sam Bankman-Fried said that he bought you out, your stake in the company. I imagine he would tr he transferred funds to you, likely somewhere between two and three billion dollars. Is that right? I remember it was two point one billion dollars at the time, and okay. a big chunk of that is in FTT tokens, which are now worthless. So he sent you FTT tokens, and you believe that that the majority of the two point one billion dollars was that. Um, it's a combination of um, I believe it was a combination of BUSD, BNB, and FTT. Um, I don't know the exact combination now, but it's probably about, um, I, I don't remember exactly, but FTT is a big chunk. And that's why we still have, like, you know, we, even after the FTT price dropped over the last year, we still had $500 million worth of it, uh, $580 million worth of it on the day when we transferred from the address we received a year and a half ago. We never touched it. We actually, actually kind of forgot about it. And then um, we transferred it on the blockchain from that address we received to Binance.com. And that got picked up by the community. So in, the, in this industry, everything is very transparent. Well, but, but my question to you is, a, a, both a bankruptcy uh, judge and potentially others uh, could seek, uh, like they did in the, in the case of uh, Bernie Madoff, frankly, to, uh, to seek to uh, claw back that money. Are you prepared to, to send that money to them? And by the way, I mean, I, and maybe this is uh, a risk to, to your firm, you know, some will measure it as uh, the value of FTT today. Some may measure it on the value of FTT at the time. So if you had to send a check in U.S. dollars for $2.1 billion, could you? So I think we'll leave that to the lawyers. Um, I think our legal team is per perfectly capable of handling it. My expectation, though, <clears throat> just from common logic, is that there was a lot of spendings um, after that transaction uh, in, the, in the more recent times FTF's done to, you know, Miami, you know, Football stadiums, uh, referees, mm, sponsorships, uh, even yeah, to Calvin right, himself. But what, would you be able to dollars. handle it if somebody asked you for $2.1 billion back? Would that be okay? Would you be able to still withstand things? 
we're financially okay. Including you have $2.1 billion to give away if somebody came to, reclaw, to claw that back, you'd we'll, still be fine? We'll, we'll let the lawyer handle it. Our fin we are financially strong. You know, I, you, the $500 million that you guys spent on Twitter, where did that money come from? Are you confident in that? Or do you have additional money? And the reason I ask these questions is, again, you guys aren't FTX, but FTX was making a lot of investments in other places that turned out to be customers' money. Where did you guys get the money for the $500 million investment in Twitter? We don't use customers' money. We have revenue. Our revenue comes from trading fees, and we have very solid revenue. We do not spend on crazy advertisements. We're, we're okay. And um, we, paid the, we paid the Twitter investment already in cash. It was done. It was not customer money. That I can guarantee you. CC, one other related question, uh, which goes to uh, interest-related products. The way interest-related products work, from my understanding, the way you can actually capture the interest to create some semblance of profit for yourself is to effectively lend those shares out, uh, typically for people to then short them. That's, that's how this all works. Um, is that changing, uh, given what's happening, what's just happened with, with FTX, and have your, your either lending standards or how this all uh, works shifted? So uh, the, there's different types of those type of products. Um, there's what FTX doing is that they just take customer money without permission and give it to Alameda to trade. And that's a very different situation than when a user puts uh, their money into a program, say uh, a earnings program, and that is used for other traders who are on the system who are properly uh, mar margin monitored. Um, and if they go through their margins, then they will be liquidated. Um, so uh, the way we do that is we do have a program called EARN where people can put their uh, money into a program to earn interest. That money is used for other margin traders to borrow from. And we actually, re sometimes we do run out because the demand, demand supply um, sometimes don't, don't match up. But the money never leaves the platform and we do margin controls for those, uh, we do risk management from those for margin traders um, just across the board. And uh, so we we don't have a we don't have an account with unlimited leverage, uh, like Alameda had on FTX. That right. is very different. 